So I'm um, Jeffrey. I work on PyTorch at Meta. And there's Horace. He also works on PyTorch at Meta. And this presentation's on new activation checkpoint APIs in PyTorch. Um, so as you have, may have heard from other presentations, uh, activation memory is a big reason why your model might oom. And activation checkpointing is a way to reduce uh, activation memory. Um, in this presentation, we'll start off by first looking at a couple uh, activation uh, checkpointing APIs that exist today, and then we'll look at some new APIs that aim to improve the flexibility and uh, automation of these uh, checkpointing APIs. So to begin, we'll first look at what happens in Eager Today. So in Eager Today, um, Autograd needs to save activations for backward in order to uh, perform gradient computation. Um, so for example, on the left here, uh, if you have a sine of x during forward, um, at some point during backward, you would need to do some cosine of x. And in order to do that cosine of x, you would need to save x for backward. Um, and keep that x for backward uh, alive throughout the duration of forward and until, uh, or, and throughout backward, until you do that cosine, at which point it can finally be cleared. So as you do forward over time, like doing more operations, you'll end up saving more and more activations. Uh, so for example, on the diagram on the right here, uh, these orange boxes represent operations, and the black arrows represent sort of input tensors and output tensors to those, to those operations. And those arrows that cross over the middle purple line represent activations that need to be saved for backward. So as, as you can see in this case, we are saving three activations for backward. Okay. So plotting this uh, eager, if we plot eager on this diagram that sort of trades off between speed and memory, eager falls on sort of the top right corner where relative to other checkpoint APIs, it stores or it's, it uses more speed, but also, uh, but also uses more memory. Um, so on the top left corner of this diagram is sort of the sweet spot where you have uh, more speed, but also less or also use less memory. And as we go through this presentation, we'll start to sort of fill out this diagram with the other techniques and see where they place relative to eager. So the first technique I'll sort of introduce is activation checkpointing. So on the left here is sort of that same diagram that you saw before, where you are saving three tensors for backward. Um, and on the right here is where uh, activation checkpointing is applied. So that, those black boxes represent uh, us uh, checkpointing those middle four operations during forward. So what this means is that instead of saving three tensors, you only need to save one tensor representing that input to that black region or that black box region. Um, and during backward, uh, given that we have this input tensor now, we can recompute the, those four uh, tensors that we checkpointed. And at that point is when we actually save those tensors for backward, um, at which point we are much closer to when those activations are used. And this, uh, this has the effect of reducing peak memory. So now that we place, uh, or going back to the same chart again, uh, we can place AC on this diagram. And relative to eager, it's sort of on the bottom left, where it's sort of slower since you're doing more compute, but at the same time, you're also saving memory. So one thing to note about uh, this chart is that like, you can actually do, or you can actually uh, tune the AC trade-off simply by or modifying which regions of your forward to do AC on or you can do, or uh, how densely to do AC. Um, but those require manual model changes, and for the purposes of this diagram, will uh, limit AC to a single fixed region. And since AC does not offer sort of any speed memory trade-off, in that sense, it's plotted as a single point on this chart. Um, another thing we want to put in perspective is what happens when you do compile. Um, so Torch compile automatically does some recomputation similar to how a checkpoint does recomputation. And by default, uh, torch.compile uses the min-comp partitioner, which chooses to recompute certain ops uh, with the objective of minimizing the number of tensors saved for backward. And this sounds a lot like what we want to do, um, but it's not exactly true since 
uh, the primary objective of the min comp uh, or torch compile is actually to re reduce runtime. So we place certain limitations on what min, uh, min cart petitioner is able to recompute. Uh, for example, uh, we are only able to recompute feasible, non compute intensive ops, and have some kind of heuristic to avoid long feasible chains. So going back to this diagram here, uh, relative to eager, compile is, improves both on the speed of memory, uh, so it's sort of on the top or top left of eager. Uh, but relative to AC, um, it's still quite uh, conservative with uh, respect to how it does recompute, and therefore it still uses some more memory. So yeah, so, for, so far we've covered some of the APIs that we have today. Um, next I'll look at some new APIs that uh, aim to improve flexibility and recompute, or uh, automation. So the first one thing I'll look at is selective activated checkpointing. So on the left here is sort of the same diagram from before where you apply AC, um, where you save a single tensor and have to recompute every single tensor in the recomputed region. Um, on the right side, but suppose uh, you have, let's say, an operation that's kind of expensive, uh, you do not want to recompute it, uh, SAC gives you the flexibility to sort of selectively not recompute that operation. So in this case, instead of saving single tensor, you get to save two tensors, but in exchange, you get to avoid a, uh, computing that expensive operation. So now we'll look at some kind of uh, specific examples of uh, uh, p policies that you can do with SAC. So for example here, or first of all, policies are how you tell SAC you know, given some operation and those arguments to the operations, how do you know, like, uh, or should SAC save or recompute? So in this, uh, this example, uh, perhaps I prefer to, you know, recompute everything like I normally would with AC, but uh, I want to maybe save Matmos in particular, um, and plotting this back on the speed memory diagram, relative to AC, uh, you are now using more memory you are, since you need to save the outputs of the memos. But compared to Eager, you might have recovered some of that performance. A more extreme example is here where you not only save all memos, but also save things like convolution or attention, and this places you even f uh, further closer to Eager um, in terms of the trade-off. Yep. So overall, like SAC gives you some more flexibility, uh, relative to AC in terms of uh, speed and memory trade-off. Um, and finally, I'll finish off with saying that uh, you can try out SAC today on Nightly's, and you only need to use uh, the existing checkpoint API and pass in sort of the context function. And yeah, feel free to look at the docs, um, which are linked. Next, I'll introduce uh, Oris to talk about memory budget. Yeah, so uh, Jeffrey just kind of gave an overview of a lot of our manual APIs for how to trade off between uh, runtime and memory. Uh, but some people also kind of want, uh, you know, some more automation, you know, in, in their lives. Uh, they kind of want, like, more ability to kind of automatically trade off between uh, memory and compute. And so one of the tricky things here about memory and compute from a compiler POV is that uh, it's kind of like a two-dimensional optimization, right? There's no like obvious answer about like where on the memory runtime uh, curve you want to be. And so this actually kind of forms a bit of like a Pareto curve, uh, where at any point of your Pareto curve, in terms of like how many activations you want to save, you can imagine that you're trying to optimize like the fastest uh, runtime you can get. Uh, and so we actually have kind of this uh, pretty neat API uh, that uh, there's kind of a, like maybe an interesting thing you can do here, which is you can kind of treat it as like a knapsack problem, uh, where you're kind of like trying to determine the set of activations to minimize, uh, uh, like the set of activations that minimizes your recompute while staying under your given uh, memory budget. Um, and so uh, you can see that over here, it basically kind of like defines this uh, curve for like, you know, how uh, the memory and the compute uh, trades off. Um, and so here's actually kind of a real example on like a transformer model. And so you can see that like, you know, most of, you can get like a, a lot of memory savings. Uh, you can get about like 50% of memory savings uh, just only recomputing like pointwise ops. Uh, and then you can see kind of have this like steady slow drop off as you start recomputing more and more of your map moles. Uh, and then I think finally in this case, the attention was very expensive. Uh, so you kind of want to recompute that last. And so that kind of gives you your overall like trade off of like how much additional uh, speed, uh, or like your overall speed you have uh, versus how much uh, memory you're saving. 
Um, and so this is kind of a, currently a very experimental feature. It's like kind of gated behind a flag. Uh, so you can set your activation memory budget and try to you know, like automatically save memory through the compiler. And in the future work, we're kind of working on a more like cohesive API uh, for users to select it. Um, so to kind of give like a recap, you know, we started off uh, this presentation kind of with the two main APIs that people mainly think of, which is you have Eager, uh, and then you have you know Torch.checkpoint, which you know saves a lot of memory. Uh, but now we've kind of introduced both a selective activation checkpointing or SAC, uh, which kind of allows uh, much more freedom over uh, this like control between your memory and your speed. And then we kind of have this more automated API to try to kind of allow you to. Uh, like automatically explore the trade-off between uh, memory and performance. Uh, so hopefully you guys uh, will find this useful for managing out-of-memory errors in your models. Uh, and thanks for listening to our talk. Wait, do, we have, do we have questions or uh, do we just go to the next talk? I'm not sure. Does anyone know? Do you have time for uh, questions? Sure, we'll, we'll answer some questions. Okay. Um, yeah. Just kind of a trivial one. So do you support nested checkpointing? What I mean is like, can you recompute something more than once? You don't know. In Eager you can, but it's not supported by compile today. Okay, okay, very cool, thank you. Uh, while talking about zero one knapsack based, like dynamic programming based uh, exploration, is it how hard or easy is it to ex extend it to like integer programming where you have like SAT solvers or something more fancy exploring the space, search space? Uh, I mean, in, in this case, like the zero one knapsack, it, like we have like an IOP solver option if you want. Okay. Uh, I mean, by default, we use some kind of like DP approximation. Uh, but th there's like an IOP solver if you, if you, th that's more your speed. Okay. I guess I'm just talking about like multivariate based. Like these are just compute speed and memory. Maybe I, I don't know. Right now, I can't come up with an example, but maybe I have more parameters to, to explore in the space. I know there are like external tools, but it'll be nice if I can plug in OR tools or something else to the exploration. Uh, yeah, it could be interesting. Okay. Uh, should we move on to the next talk? Uh, okay. Uh, I, I'm actually also involved on the next talk, so uh, I guess it's up to me.